Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you something super cool in Blender 2.91 and that is how to turn a fire simulation into a mesh using the volume to mesh modifier. If you are wanting to follow along with this tutorial make sure you download the 2.91 beta link is in the description. If this version is already out you don't have to worry about this step. To get started, we need to add in a volume. Now, you can either create one yourself in Houdini, download one off a website, or create your own here in Blender using Manzaflow. And that is what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the default cube since we're not going to need it in our scene. And then I'll add in a UV sphere. This is going to be our flow object. Next, I'm gonna go over to Object, down to Quick Effects, and then Quick Smoke. This will automatically add a domain for us. I'll scale it up slightly and drag it up. Somewhere around here should be pretty good. And then over in the domain settings, we're just gonna do a quick simulation. I'll select my flow object, switch the type over to fire. Underneath the flow source, I'm going to set the surface emission down to one. I'm gonna turn on initial velocity and this will give us a initial velocity along the axis that we set here. And I'm gonna do it in the Z direction. So the fire is going to shoot up a little bit along the Z direction. Next, I'm going to select my domain and set the resolution to 128. And I'm also going to scroll down over to the fire settings and set the reaction speed down to 0.5. The lower you go with this value, the higher the flames will be. I want the flames to be pretty high, so I'm setting that to a lower value, and they should be up somewhere around here. Next up, the important step is the cache. We need to make sure we set a custom folder so we can then use that data in that folder as an open VDB in a new Blender file. So what we're gonna do is set a custom folder right here by clicking on this button and then navigating to a folder. Once you have found the folder that you want, you can click accept. And then for the end frame, I'm gonna set this to 150. I'm also going to make sure the type is set over to modular so we can bake it in. And then the file format, make sure it's set to OpenVDB. If this is set to Unicache, it's not gonna work. So make sure OpenVDB is the format. Once you've done that, we are ready to bake. So I'm going to scroll up to our bake button right here. I'm going to save my project just in case this crashes and I'm going to call it tutorial and then save Blender file. Once we've done this, we can click on bake. The bake has finished. Now let's play our simulation to see what it looks like. I'll scroll through here and our fire simulation is looking pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is create a new Blender file and import this as an open VDB. I'm gonna press Control N and click on General and I'm also going to save this before we do it. And with the default cube, we're not gonna need it, so I'm gonna press X and get rid of it. Next, I'll press Shift A, add in a volume, and then import open VDB. Once we select this, let's navigate to where we saved our cache. Mine is right here. I'll select data, and we can see all of the 150 files of the open VDB. Press A to select everything and go import. Once we do this, it'll create this big box around, and if we play our simulation, we can see a little bit of smoke in the center, as you can see there. With this volume selected, we can go over to the volume tab and you will see a lot of different stuff over here on the right. We have flame, shadow, temperature, velocity, and we can select them by just clicking on them and seeing what they look like. The velocity, the temperature, we can check all of these. The ones that we'll be using in this tutorial is the density and the flame. What we need to do now is add in a mesh and then apply the modifier. I'll press Shift A and add in a cube and then drag it over to the left. It doesn't really matter where it's at, it just needs to be out of the way. And then what we can do is go over to the Modifier tab, click Add Modifier and Volume to Mesh. In the object, we're going to select the Fluid Data 0001 and then once we do this, we can see it's now applied it to our volume. Now currently, it's only displaying it in a small part of the volume and we can control this with the threshold amount. You can think of the threshold as the density. The higher you go, the more it will clamp down and get rid of the, the mesh. And with the lower values, it will actually expand it outwards and fill out the entire thing. If I drag this lower, you can see it starts to fill it out. If I drag it all the way down to almost zero, it's completely filled out the smoke. If I drag it up higher, it gets rid of it. The adaptivity is basically a decimate for the mesh. So if I drag this upwards, it will try to get rid of some of the vertices that it doesn't really need but keep the general shape. I'm gonna leave that on zero. There's also three different resolution modes. We have grid, which is automatic. We have voxel amount. We can control the exact amount of voxels in our mesh, and you can set that with this slider. And then we also have voxel size. 
The voxel size is controlled with this slider right here, and if you want more resolution, you would turn it down. If you want less resolution, you would turn it up so the voxels are bigger. I like going with the voxel amount so I can set the specific amount, and I'm going to go with 128. I'm also going to turn on smooth shading. Now right now the grid name is set to density. If we select our volume again and go over to the volume tab, we can select the ones that we want here. We can see all of the grid names. So if we want it to change it over to flames, we can select our mesh and type in for the grid name flame. And there we go. Now it is using the flame data for the mesh and we can play it and this is what it looks like. Pretty cool. What I'm gonna do now is actually shift D this mesh right here and right click and set the grid name over to density. And now we have two of them. We have one for the density, which is the smoke, and one for the fire, which is right here. And now if we restart and play this, we can see our simulation. And how cool is this? We can actually use a mesh as the volume. Now that we have both of our objects, I'm gonna show you a quick material for the fire and the smoke. I'm going to split this view up top here and switch this over to the shader editor and then I'll press N to close off that panel. With the fire selected, I'll click on new, and then with this, I'm going to add in a color ramp to use as a gradient. I'll press shift A, add in a converter, color ramp, we'll place that here. Then I will add in a input texture coordinate, and then a mapping node to control the location of the gradient. I'm gonna take the generated, plug that into the vector, and then the vector into the factor, and then the color into the base color right here. Right now, if we press Z and go into rendered view, we won't be able to see it too much, and that's because we need to change the rotation over here. I'm gonna set the Y to 45 and the Z to 90. Once we do this, we should be able to see the gradient working. Then in the color ramp, we can set the color. I'm, for the black value, I'm going to drag it up and give it a nice reddish orange color. And then for the white value, I'm gonna set this over to a lighter orange, something around here. I'm also going to take the color and plug that into the emission and set the strength of this over to 2. And for the smoke right here, I will select it, click on new, and just set the base color over to a darker gray. Another thing I forgot to mention is that since this is a mesh, you can add in any other modifier that you want. You can triangulate the modifier, add in a wireframe, a remesh, any of these, you can play around with it and create some really cool results. And there we go. Now I'm going to set up a quick scene and then show you how to render this out. All right, I've set up a quick scene. Over here we have the EV settings with some bloom, screen space reflections, and then a medium high contrast. I'm also going to come up to this menu, turn on the camera icon, and turn off the fluid for the viewport and the render since I don't want it to show up. Right now with this version of Blender, rendering a volume to mesh is completely broken. If I go over to render and then click on render animation, you'll notice it's just completely black. Nothing is showing up. So it's totally bugged right now and I'm not sure exactly why that is. But one way I learned to fix this is to select your fluid or your volume, going over to this tab right here and turning this over to the world settings. Now, if we render out an image, it should show up. As you can see here, it did show up, but if you were to render an animation, it would still be black. So unfortunately, you can't really render an animation at the moment. If you're using a stable version, I don't think you need to worry about this. If you wanted to render out an entire animation, you would have to do it manually. So the way I did it to render out those animations that you saw at the beginning of the video is I would restart the timeline on frame one, press F12, and then hit Shift Alt S. Then I would save it over to a folder. I would call it one, and then click on save as image. And I would have to repeat this process for every single frame. And it is really annoying and very tedious, but I did it for you guys. So again, at the moment, this is the way you have to do it. I couldn't find any other workaround. I would go to the next frame by hitting the right arrow, F12 to render, Shift Alt S, and then an easy way to save it, you can hit the plus sign. That'll add one number to the number that is specified in the name, enter, and just repeat the process. If for some reason while you're starting to save it, it becomes black again, what you have to do is come over to the volume and just turn on something on and off, and then it should refresh it and you'll be able to do it. But there you go, that is how you turn a Mantiflow simulation into a volume to mesh using Blender version 2.91.
Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and comment down below what you would like to see next. If you're interested, feel free to join the Discord. The link is in the description. You can ask questions there, post your artwork, and just hang out. Make sure you subscribe for more tutorials in the future, and I will see you in the next one.